This lecture covers a brief history of pharmacology. We'll start from its beginnings in through the 21st century, and we'll talk about where drugs come from. Pharmacology comes from the Greek word pharmakon, which means medicine, but also poison and remedy, because early medicine was toxic enough to kill a patient or the enemy. Most ancient cultures didn't know much about the human body, so treating illness was trial and error. The word drug comes from the Dutch word drug, which means dry, as in the use of dry herbs. The Chinese made contributions to pharmacology. The Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic was written in the first century and is one of the first manuals of pharmacology. It described the yin yang, acupuncture, and included over 300 medicines. 250 of those were herbs. In Egypt, there was the Ebers papyrus from 1550 BC. It listed about 700 recipes from everything about crocodile bites to psychiatric illnesses. The act of passing on these discoveries by writing them down was priceless. As we advance through the 19th and 20th century, we see the emergence of healers. Healers were chosen based on their knowledge of plants. This varies, though, among cultures. Remember, treatments were not a scientific, but rather trial and error and guesswork. So, each person had to figure out on their own which herb worked. This picture is a shaman medicine woman. In the 1800s, chemists were able to isolate pure chemicals. This was a game changer, and it marked the beginning of modern pharmacology. Unfortunately, by the early 1900s, the pharmacists had to distill and prepare each medicine when it was ordered. Forty years later, during World War II, mass production of penicillin was possible, and this minimized the number of deaths from infection. In World War I, more soldiers died from infection than from combat injuries. With the use of penicillin in World War II, the number of deaths from infection was significantly lower. Pharmacology advanced rapidly in the second half of the 20th century as many new drugs were being discovered. The use of natural sources in addition to or instead of artificial sources gained wider acceptance. Today, new medications are made almost daily. Genetic engineering can alter the source of drugs, which allow more drugs to be made. There are a lot of biologics these days. I'm sure you've seen some of them advertised on TV. Biologics is a drug that is made from a semi-synthesized biological or living source. Many of these biologics use recumbent molecules, which are DNA molecules made in the lab, where they bring together genetic material from many sources and they create sequences that wouldn't be found in normal genetic material. You know, there is certainly a lot of concerns and discussions about genetically modified organisms and genetically modified food. Did you know that the top selling drug for 2015 was aldalimumab or Humira for arthritis? This is a biologic. Stem cells are cells with the potential to develop into many types of cells in the body. They work as a repair system in our body. There are two main types of stem cells. There's embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. You know, stem cell research will continue to have an impact on disease and its treatment, including medications. Alternative medicine is now becoming a valuable addition to traditional medicine. Alternative medicine includes things like aromatherapy, acupuncture, acupressure, and therapeutic touch, just to name a few. Pharmacodynamics describe what the drug does to the body. Does the drug replace something that's missing? Does the drug prevent something? So in our categories, first we have curative. Those are, of course, drugs that cure. That would be like an antibiotic to cure an infection. Prophylactic means to prevent a problem. Vaccines are prophylactic medications to prevent disease. Diagnostic medications help diagnose a problem. An example would be barium, which is used as a contrast material in a diagnostic test. Palliative medications treat symptoms to make patients more comfortable. Morphine is used for comfort. Replacement drugs, these drugs replace something that's missing or there's a shortage like with the medication insulin. And then lastly, there are destructive drugs. These drugs destroy tumors or microbes like many of our cancer drugs. 
Drugs are now being made in the lab, but many still come from natural sources such as plants, animals, minerals, and toxins. The scientists use the natural sources as a kind of pattern or template to create synthetic or man-made versions. Synthetic drugs are usually more inexpensive and can be mass-produced. Can you identify these drugs? Okay, so lanolin, this is a medication put on the skin and it comes from wool. Digoxin is a medication used for heart failure and is made from the foxglove plant pictured in the middle. The bottom picture is potassium. Potassium is extracted from minerals and it's an important mineral on our body that affects our muscles, especially the heart muscle. When we give a diuretic or a water pill like furosemide or the brand name is Lasix, potassium may be depleted and patients need, may need to take potassium supplements. Well, that concludes chapter one. Make sure you bring any comments or any questions that you might have on this material to the Farm Cafe.